CMV Solar Rider back with another video. For those who saw the little emergency alert on my channel, you know there's some weird happenings going on in DMV Solar Rider land. So today is officially the final voyage of DMV Solar Rider's 2019 Indian Chieftain Dark Horse. And as you have probably gathered from my teaser, I am trading my beloved Dark Horse in on a 2020 bright red Indian Challenger. And if you've been watching my videos in the order in which I put them up, you know they're kind of starting to tell a bit of a story. I absolutely love my Chieftain. Uh, every mile I've ridden on it has been, as I've said before, a true joy. But there are some things that have come up over the six months I've been riding the bike that make you think. And when it comes to the Chieftain, as much as I love it, and as you know from my little rant video from not too long ago, there are two things about this motorcycle that irritate me. One, I'm not crazy about the Ride Command navigation on the pre-2020 models. It's not that reliable. Uh, it doesn't have live traffic routing. Most importantly, it doesn't have CarPlay, which is all I would be using for traffic routing, you know, using Waze, which also has the benefit of telling you where red light cameras, speeding cameras, and, you know, speed traps are located. And, you know, as you already know, if you watch that video, that really bothers me that I can't get it on my Chieftain. And the other issue I've had pretty persistently since I bought the bike is, is buffeting, wind buffeting. And the solution to wind buffeting on my Chieftain is really just a taller windshield. Uh, I already have a 12-inch Freedom Shield on it. I think the stock windshield is about 10 inches. And as you know from my other videos, I have an extension piece that can give me up to an additional six inches. I usually have it set at four. So I'm basically, in order to be buffeting free, I'm riding around with 16 inches of windshield. And I don't like that. Uh, I really don't like looking through a windshield if I can avoid it. If I'm going fast on a highway, okay, fine, I can tolerate it. But at low speeds, you know, that, that's nothing that I want to deal with. Uh, I'd much rather be looking over the windshield, worst case scenario. And, you know, when it comes to putting that extension piece on, when I have it at an extra four inches, you know, even when the windshield is down, you're looking right through it. So, and the extension itself is a pain in the butt. It's hard to put on and off. It's nothing you can do on the fly. You got to like screw it on, screw it up. It, it's not convenient. So... I was going to just get a 14-inch a windshield from Freedom Shield, see how that did, and if I had to, I'd return that and get a 16-inch. And my expectation was that would solve all of my buffeting problems, the compromise being that even at low speeds, I was going to have to look through the windshield, which I hate. Anyway, so those kind of issues were persistent, and I addressed them in my 6,000-mile review of the Chieftain. So it's not like they came out of nowhere, for those of you who have been watching my videos for a little while now. And then I started doing these test rides. And you know, it wasn't, wasn't planned. I, I was not doing reviews of motorcycles. It was an opportunity to do an Indian demo day. It was an opportunity to go and test ride some Harley Davidson motorcycles. And I would encourage all of you, do both uh, if you can. If you have dealers near you and you know, do, go to their websites, check out their events. Uh, Indian dealers are really good about telling you when they're having a demo day. I'm sure Harley, Harley, it's more just make an appointment, come and test ride. I don't, I don't think they need a special event. In that process, as you know, I really like the road glide. I really like the fairing. I prefer the road glides fairing at high speeds to my Chieftain with its windshield, adjustable windshield. But I didn't like the road glide overall. Riding my Chieftain was a superior experience for me. So even though I'm pretty confident I could have gotten a good deal on the road glide, a good deal on my bike, on a trade, 
I didn't do it. I didn't want to do it. But as you'll recall from my CarPlay rant, these things are always in the back of my mind. And for me, riding a motorcycle is not about, you know, sacrificing this preference or that preference. It's what do I love? What do I want? What will I enjoy? And, you know, yes, to some extent, I'm still thinking about these things. You know, I picked my Chieftain over the Challenger initially for the wrong reasons. You know, I felt like when I tried them out, the, Ch the Chieftain was a little more comfortable for me at my size. And the Challenger, which is a, just under an inch higher in terms of seat height, was a little more unwieldy to me. And so I picked the Chieftain. And I didn't regret it at the time, but you know, I've ridden the Challenger several times since, and I've been riding my Chieftain for now almost 11,000 miles. And my perspective on a motorcycle and what feels good or bad or, or what's comfortable or uncomfortable obviously has changed since. And I don't, you know, that extra half inch or three quarters of an inch in the Challenger seat height and you know, distribution of weight between the fixed fairing or the bat wing fairing, those things don't aren't an issue for me. I'm perfectly comfortable on the Challenger now. And anyways, after I had that experience with the Road Glide at a Harley dealer, you know, I'm still bitter about car play. I'm still dealing with the buffeting issue, which, you know, it sucks. If you've got a woodpecker pecking on your helmet nonstop, I mean, that'll suck the life out of you on a long ride before you know it. So I was pretty much resigned to just dealing with it and addressing these things on my Chieftain because I love this motorcycle otherwise. But you know, I'm still thinking about all these things. And then uh, Indian Motorcycle came out with their September 2020 incentives for people trading in a bike on a 2020 bagger pretty good incentives and I decided okay let's go ride the Challenger one more time I've ridden it twice and you know they were the first time was when I bought my Chieftain and I was a little nervous riding these big bikes for the first time I didn't give the Challenger it's fair fair deal you know I was immediately comfortable on the Chieftain I said good enough and the second time I rode the Challenger it was great. It was a lot of fun. I was comfortable on it. No issues with weight or anything. And you'll see that in the test ride if you go and you watch it. But you know, when you're doing a test ride, you have the stock handlebars, you're kind of forward. You're not getting a bit of wind. And like I said in my car play video, I don't recall coming away from the Challenger even thinking about uh, buffeting on, with the windshield. And I'll tell you why, because you're always sitting so close to the fairing you're never gonna get any wind. But for me, in riding a motorcycle, I'm gonna have a really upright seating position. I'm gonna have, you know, several inches of pullback on the handlebars. So my seating position is not gonna be the position you're in when you do a test ride. And and so that's why it, it, it just never came to, to my mind riding the Challenger to even really think about it. But of course, with all my issues, now I'm thinking about it all the time. So I went and I test rode a Challenger for the third time. This time, I got it up on the highway. And, uh, <laughs> well, let's just say I went a lot faster than 55. <laughs> and instead of, you know, you know, the stock bars in the Challenger are already pulled back quite a bit. But for me, I still have to lean over a bit. And I just got up there at freaking 80 miles an hour and I sat upright one-handed just to make sure my helmet was up in the wind and I felt nothing. Maybe a little tiny bit of dancing on the top of my helmet. And of course the stock Challenger windshield is really small so adding say another inch to it I'll still see over it at all times and that's the other thing about the Challenger. When I had the windshield up I was still looking over it. And, and I had, a, I would say, at least two inches to spare. So if I still feel a little dancing on the top of my helmet, I can always go and get another inch or two and still look over that windshield at all times. So it is visually superior for my preferences. 
so I really liked it. I get all the bells and whistles I want. I prefer the Challenger sparing to the Batwing. As far as the engine goes, the Power Plus is a phenomenal power point. I really like it. The 111 is outstanding. I've never found my Chieftain lacking for power. I feel no need to go and upgrade to a 116. Um, you know, I've run the, the factory 116. I didn't notice much of a difference. So that's what we're doing today. I just wanted to film this and explain why I decided to trade in my Chieftain, even though I absolutely love this motorcycle, and I really do. You know, the only other thing about the Chieftain I really didn't discuss in my review is the color. I mean, this is matte black, and it looks sharp. And all I ever want was a bright red motorcycle. You know, my Scout was a bright red. I love bright red. <laughs> I don't mind chrome. I chose the blacked out, you know, the, the Chieftain Dark Horse in matte black because it was, to me, it was the best option available. It wasn't because I was dying for a matte black motorcycle. Uh, you know, everyone's got a black motorcycle. When I'm cruising down the road, I'd rather look a little different. So the fact that I can get this Challenger in loud, bright red is a true benefit. And look, if in six months I think I made a horrible mistake, I'm going to tell you that. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. But anyways, that's what I got for you. I've had all these videos stockpiled in my queue because, you know, I've... I started to tell a story from one video to the next and I couldn't just put them up out of order. So by the time you're seeing this, ah, God knows how many miles I'll put on a Challenger. Um, but my next video will probably be a ride video on the Challenger. I'm not going to do a test ride or a, a, an actual review until I've got probably another 6,000 miles on it. And how fast I get there really just depends on, you know, how much time off I have. So, but you'll see it on my next video. And I'll talk, you know, casually, things I like, things I don't like. Comfort, handling. You know, I think what we'll do instead of just waiting to do a 6,000 mile review. What we'll do is... We'll do like an ongoing review of my Challenger. Like as I'm doing my ride videos, I'll also talk about the bike and how it feels and what I like, if there are things I don't like. And then we'll get to like 6,000 miles and we'll do, okay, let's break it all down. Just like we did for the Jeep. Well, that's what I got for you today, guys. The next time I film a ride will be on my bright red Indian Challenger. I'm excited. I am confident it is everything that I need based on my experience in 14 months and about almost 17,000 miles on, on the road, on motorcycles, I think the Challenger really is my perfect solution. If it's not, man, I'm going to be pretty upset because barring the things the Challenger does better than the Chieftain, this Chieftain is phenomenal. I really do love it. Anyways, that's what I got for you today. I'd certainly appreciate it if you give this video a thumbs up. Put my ride and ride related content out every Friday. So hit that subscribe button. Hit the notification bell and you'll be made aware of when the next video is out. Uh, certainly appreciate getting comments from you. Don't hesitate to comment in the comment section below. Or you can reach out to me on my various social media accounts. You can even email me directly at my Gmail account. All those are on the screen. But until my next video, please be safe out there, and I'll see you soon.